Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In today's episode we are in Hawaii and more precisely in Oahu. And in this episode what we're going to do is we're going to try different activities that can be done here as a tourist in Hawaii. And I know that sometimes when you go to a new country and especially an island like Hawaii you want to make the best out of it. So sometimes you do need someone to take you on a tour. So without any further ado let's explore. The island of Oahu in Hawaii is home to roughly 1 million people. Oahu is often nicknamed or translated as the gathering place. This makes sense because Oahu is the most populated Hawaiian island. The city of Honolulu, largest city, state, capital and main deep water marine port for the state of Hawaii is located here. The first activity that I'm doing is located at Paradise Cove and it is the Paradise Cove Luau which is a really cool luau that lasts, well apparently the activity lasts about five hours and comes with a dinner and a show and a lot of really cool things and obviously well we are right at the beach, right in front of the beach well because we are in Hawaii and everything happens at the beach and yeah I'm really excited to see what this luau brings and yeah I love seeing shows and I'm kind of really curious to see what kind of food they're going to be serving us. The price of admission to go to a luau at Paradise Cove goes for around $125 per person. Back in the day such a feast was called a paina or aha aina. The modern name comes from that of a food often served at the luau such as squid or chicken which consists of meat, taro leaves and coconut milk. The main dish of a luau is kalua pua which is a slow cooked pig in an emu earth oven. Even though they show the unearthing of the pig, the food is cooked earlier on and this part of the luau is mostly done for show. Listening to the music and looking at the dancers dancing is pretty darn entertaining. And since all of this is happening towards sunset, the whole thing feels very paradise-like. So at the luau, the way that it is, is that you go into this place which is really beautiful and there's a bunch of seats and they assign your seats. And then after they assign your seats, well, you're gonna get a show, but they do wait for the sunset because it's kind of nicer with all the fire and all the things that they do with the dances. But yeah, this is kind of how it looks. And of course, as I said, it's on the side of the beach and it's really, really extraordinary. It's beautiful. Going to a luau certainly is a super touristic activity. But personally, I feel that in order to get the full Hawaiian experience, it's pretty much a requirement. In the end, the food is nothing to brag about. That's why I forgot to film it. But the show is spectacular. It comprises itself of a bunch of traditional Hawaiian dances and some traditional songs to accompany it. The most impressive part of the show is all the fire dancing and the cool tricks that the dancers are performing while dancing with their lit poles. All in all, a very touristic experience with paradise-like settings and a really entertaining show to watch. Something that's really worth doing when you are in Hawaii is getting up really early to watch the sunrise. I know, I know it's hard, but trust me, it's really worth it. And also it's a free activity and just watching the sunrise, it's just gorgeous. There's nothing that compares to it, especially in Hawaii. We are in paradise right here. So do yourself a favor, get up early and go watch the sunrise. A lot of activities in Hawaii may be pretty expensive, but getting up super early to watch the sunrise or even some of the sunsets in Oahu is free and truly one of the most stupendous things to do out there. Most tourists seem to go to Waikiki Beach in order to watch the sunrise and sunset, but these beaches are usually pretty packed with tourists. If you want to get away from the crowds and have a piece of paradise all to yourself, I recommend going to either Kailua or Lanikai Beach, which are located on the east coast of the island. Both beaches are the perfect place to watch the sunrise for a couple of reasons. The sun rises over the ocean in the east and the clouds the windward side of the island make for some wonderful changes in color. Also the water is extremely clear in these areas so taking a super early morning swim might make watching the sunrise even more spectacular. Sunsets are equally spectacular in Hawaii so if getting up early isn't an option do yourself a favor and at least catch a sunset. One thing that can easily be done when you are in Hawaii is to actually rent out a surfboard just like the one I have right here. I'm about five foot nine so I got a nine foot surfboard. It's about $25 for half a day and yeah even though I don't have any experience surfing I am gonna try it out. Uh, I'm probably gonna fall out but yeah this is some uh, or one of the experiences that's kind of cheap to do in Hawaii if uh, you're uh, in for a little bit of a thrill. Being a super inexperienced surfer, the surfing experience pretty much consisted of me hitting the waves and falling pretty hard. 
As a beginner, I was recommended to go to Castles Beach, which is at the far end of Kailua Beach. Castles has a small surf break offshore and is a much less crowded beach than other beaches in the area. And because of its consistent moderate waves, it will draw a fair amount of surfers during swells, but it is also a perfect place for beginners. When you are in Hawaii, there are a lot of fish-oriented themed activities, and right here at the Shark's Cove, which is part of the North Shore, which is in the north of Hawaii of Oahu, there is a really beautiful place where you can go and see the fish, where you can go and snorkel. And of course, well, if you are a tourist, you're not gonna come here with some snorkeling gear, but luckily they have a rental place right in front of this beach, which makes it so convenient to come here and snorkel. And then when you're looking at all the fish, it's really cool because there's all these different varieties you can even see turtles. There's cool coral right here too. So yeah, it's definitely a must if you are in Hawaii. Shark's Cove is located in the North Shore region of Oahu, which is best known for its massive waves, attracting surfers from all around the globe. As for Shark's Cove, it is one of Oahu's best snorkeling and dive beaches, so the shore can get a little crowded with people. Shark's Cove is made out of a small rocky bay which forms part of Pupukea Beach Park and boasts blue water and an impressive amount of sea life. If you're lucky, you might even run into a sea turtle. The bottom is made up of large, smooth boulders and coral heads, forming small caves and ledges for marine life to hide. Thus the importance of wearing water shoes in order not to get cut by the boulders. Even though this region is known for waves, the walls of the surrounding cliffs provide calmer water most of the year, attracting schooling surface fish. If you're a little bit adventurous, here in Hawaii, they actually have a shark tour, which lets you as you guessed it from the name, interact with sharks. It's located on the North Shore. That's where a lot of those shark tours are. And this one that I chose is one that has a cage that submerges under the water and you can see sharks with a snorkel. But there are also open sea adventures that you can go on to that don't have a cage. But yeah, for this one, I thought that this was my first interaction with sharks and I thought that this would probably be the safest bet to do it. And I'm kind of excited. It's a little bit of a gray day, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. For my shark diving activity, I selected a company called North Shore Shark Adventures. The activity is around one and a half hours in length total from the moment you step onto the boat until you are escorted into the shark cage. There's a possibility of doing a similar tour without a cage, but for first time, I recommend the cage version of swimming with sharks. Riding out to sea on the small boats that they provide can be extremely choppy, so getting seasick does happen to quite a lot of people. The cage is about three miles off the coast, so getting there by boat is a good 15 to 20 minute ride. Once there, they escort the various groups and let them have 15 minutes out in the sea with the sharks. Seeing all the sharks in their natural habitat is pretty astounding, but I did get pretty seasick because once in the cage, the sea is even more choppy. And if you're not used to feeling all this motion, it may induce seasickness. Definitely eating dry bread or food is the best thing to do prior to going on one of these excursions, as it limits the chance of getting sick. All in all, sick or not, it's an amazing experience to do while in Hawaii. Of course, once you are at the North Shore, well, we also have the Waimea Botanical Gardens, which is really, really cool. They also have the Wailele Falls in this botanical garden, and it is a very tropical botanical garden, so a lot of the plants are really different than probably what you're used to seeing with a lot of tropical vibes and a lot of greenery. And as I did mention, Hawaii has a lot of rain, so everything is just so green and lush. It also, also feels kind of like you're watching the movie Jurassic Park, well, because they did film the movie Jurassic Park in this area. But yeah, as a tourist, you can come here, you can watch all the different plants, and at the same time, you can see a spectacular waterfall that you can actually swim in. And it's really, really cool. Yes, there are a lot of tourists, but it is well worth it. The Waimea Valley contains 35 distinct collections, representing some 5,000 taxa from around the world, including one of the finest collections of Polynesian plants in existence, as well as excellent collections of very rare Hawaiian plants, and endangered species native to Lord Howe Island, and individual gardens dedicated to plants from Guam, Madagascar, the Mascarene Islands, the Agasawara Islands, and the Seychelles. At the far end of the botanical garden, there's the Wailele Falls, which is mostly used by tourists for swimming and to gaze at the 45-foot waterfall. This place of the park in particular is a really gorgeous area and very refreshing to swim in, especially with the tropical weather of Hawaii. Like all amazing places in Oahu, it can get filled with people, but looking at the beautiful nature surrounding the waterfall, it's easy to forget how busy this place really is. The Waimea Valley also has endangered birds such as the Alae Ula, 
with only about 500 birds left in the state and about 13 of them located in the botanical garden. At the entrance of the park they also have peacocks that seem to be pretty eager to show their beautiful feathers to all the tourists in the area. This park is probably one of the biggest highlights of Oahu and cannot be missed by anybody visiting Hawaii. Hawaii truly has so many things to offer from water activities to beautiful shows on the beach and pretty much well actually well I should just say this place is heaven on earth. But with that being said, I really hope that you guys enjoyed coming on this visit of Hawaii and maybe this has enlightened you to know exactly what activities to do when you come here to Hawaii. And uh, yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment too, let me know if there's maybe other places I should go visit here in Hawaii or other things that maybe I might have missed. Uh, this will be a good excuse for me to come back and make another video about Hawaii. It, it is gorgeous right here, so I don't mind coming back. But with that being said, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.